So here we are, we're just on the way home, and I thought I'd do my first episode of The Breakdown. So, what is The Breakdown? The Breakdown is just going to be me talking about my match, and dissecting what goes on in it, where I think I've got things right, where I think I've got things wrong, whether Lady Luck has shined down on me, and basically what, what I could have done better. So, I'm just going to dissect the match from start to finish. So this is the first episode and it's the first match I'm gonna, gonna cover in the breakdown. And basically I've been to White Springs Fishery on the match lake fishing my FA Super Cup um, knockout match against Mikey Williams. Now a lot of you will know Mikey, he's a class angler you know, we've known each other a long, long time. We're really good mates, and this competition is a brilliant competition. But it's just not nice when you're when you're fishing against mates and you have to sort of knock a mate out. Um, but you know, we're all in trying to get to a final, so it is what it is, really. So, like I said, we was on Match Lake, White Springs. Um, it's a lake that I know quite well. Lots of skimmers, lots of eyed, lots of carps, some, some F1s as well, but not so many F1s in recent days. So at the draw, I've drawn peg 13, which to me, I couldn't have got a better draw. 13 is probably one of the best pegs on there. Um, it's like on down in the corner, on an on end peg. It's got a bit of a bottom bank to fish to. So it's got lots of options, and on the day the wind was blowing my way as well. Mikey drew peg 23, which is not the best to be honest. You know, he had a little bit of room. Um, he had two pegs either side of him, left out. But even with that bit of space, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a good peg, but I don't think it'd be worth a big weight. So I went went down to my peg, I got there, I had a little look. You know, it was quite warm, the wind was blowing into the peg, it looked lovely, and I thought to myself, if I could catch, set myself a target of 160, 170, I think that would be enough to, to sort of go through in the Super Cup and knock Mikey out. I didn't think Mikey's peg was gonna be worth 160, 170. Um, if he fished an absolute brilliant match, you know, a perfect match, he could have called 150. But uh, I just didn't think he was capable of that. So that's 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 what I set my stall out to do. So basically, I set a, a method feeder to the bottom bank, um, two lines, set one 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 bit closer to me and one bit further away. Um, I set a shallow line at about 12 meters fished uh, 30 metres with a dolly but with a short kit and a short fall, so it was about 12 metres. Um, decided on fishing here, it's going to loose feed casters, open to catch shallow later on in the match. I did have a little uh, sneaky practice last week and I caught some fish shallow, so you know, I, I opened and that was going to that was going to sort of kick off. I did set him a line underneath it, maybe he's going you know, for a big worm or something like that. I also set up a short line, which I fed with ground bait, loose ground bait, and a few casters over, hoping to catch some skimmers. Um, skimmers and I, there was, was a match on your, uh, about a month ago, a month and a half ago, and I caught 50 odd pound of I short on, on casters that day, so I have set that up off at an angle to my left, and I set a pace line up about seven meters down towards the corner, but, but, but at the bottom of the shelf, um, the edge is quite deep on this bag, they're sort of free foot, you can't get in tight. So I thought, oh, that's my best option, is to fish paste just at the bottom of the shelf, where it's about four foot deep, and hopefully catch a few bigger fish doing that. So we started the match, um, got all my bait ready, got it all sorted, called all in, I thought, right, fed, fed a pot of uh, casters, probably half a 250ml pot of casters, on my on my long line. I like to do this when I'm shallow fishing, I just like like to put a bit of bait on the bottom and if I can get bait if I can get fish to sort of come to that bait, 
they buy loose feet and they can drag them up through the layers. So I always tend to do that, I always tend to put a little bit of bait and I don't just start loose feeding. I like to put a little bit of bait in first. So I've done that, fed my, my short skimmer line, skimmer eyed line, um, two pots of loose grown bait, a little bit of um, minced worm, and some casters and some grown bait. Put a little rich ball of that over the top and then just threw, a, threw an odd caster over it. Started on my short method line. Now I fished uh, grown bait and micro 50 50 with two dead reds on the hook. Um, I think that's a brilliant, brilliant sort of hook bait for fishing method feeder against sort of islands or up against the bottom bank where it's a bit shallower. I think that's an absolutely fantastic bait for that. So I started on the short method line, like I said. Probably had four or five casts there. Never, never had a bite, never had a pull. And it was probably sort of, I don't know, 15 minutes into the match at that point. So I quickly come back, hooked it up, picked my long method line up, went down the bank on my long method line, and within sort of three, four minutes, the tip's gone round, and I've had one about two pounds. Um, caught quite regular on this for the first sort of hour, hour and a bit in the match. Probably, probably caught 25, 30 pound maybe. So I think it's going really, really well. Normally you catch a few, a few bigger fish on that bottom bank, but today for some reason, they're all sort of little squeakers, about a pound to three pound. But you know, I was fish at the end of the day, getting, getting me off the mark, I was keeping my ticket over. And I thought to myself, right, this is a good little start now. If I can keep going, I guess I'd be, I'd be all right. So I got me about 30 pound. About an hour and an hour and twenty minutes in, thirty to forty pound. Um, be loose feeding my caster line, been loose feeding that. I had a quick drop in on my skimmer line to have a little look. About an hour and twenty minutes in, and it never budged. Now bear in mind that that line been fizzing, and you know there, there were signs of activity of fish there, but never had a bite. So I don't know what they were doing there, but um, they certainly wasn't wasn't feeding like I wanted them to feed. So, come off that, dropped it on my shallow line before I give it a go. Now, I learned a few things the week before when I had a sneaky little practice, and what I, what I learned was the carp were coming into my peg very, very shallow. So if I fish sort of 16 inches to the deeper, which is like where you would normally want to catch carp, they, they'd come into your swim, you wouldn't get any indication to tell you that they're shallower, but you'd have an odd swirl where you're feeding your casters, and you wouldn't get any bites. But the week before I learned that if I fished sort of 12 inches to 10 inches, I just kept sort of lifting the rig like two inches and dropping it back in, every now and again you get the elastic pulled out, and, and they were proper carp. So I knew this from the week before, so I had this in my mind. So I started feeding some casters, went out there, Went out 16 inches deep just to see what was going on. It might be the right depth on the day. Went out 16 inches deep. Never had a bite, never had an indication. But like I said again, I seen a swirl off to the side of where I feed my casters. And I thought, I know what's going on here. They, they, they're doing the same as what they've done the week before. So I shipped back in, put a rig on that was 12 inches deep. Went out, put it in there, fed some casters, lifted the two inches, dropped it back in, last it out and I caught an F1. And I thought, oh, brilliant, like they're they, they, they ready. Like. Um, I caught an odd fish on it for about for about an hour, I would have bet. I caught a very odd carp and a very odd F1. Um, no silverfish at all, no silver problems. You just like sort of sat there until you had a bite of a carp or an F1. But it just didn't seem, didn't seem right. There wasn't enough sort of, there wasn't enough catching enough fish on it to keep me sort of on it. And with the wind, it was starting to pick up and it was starting to get a bit awkward to, to group your casters quite quite tight because I think that's very important is grouping your casters tight. Um, and to actually fish fish like with those short lashes, it's getting quite sort of hard to do. So I've decided to come off it and chuck the meth feeder again. So come off it sort of mid-match, chuck the meth feeder again, 
never had a bike for sort of 10, 15 minutes after a few chucks. Then I caught one, and then I caught quite steady then for about for probably 40 minutes of the match. Um, probably caught about 30, 30 pounds, 35 pounds in, in, in that time. Um, I'll be honest with you, like I said, come with the good and the bad bits of this of these matches. I chucked the mouth feeder out, clipped the clipped the grass, tips got round, hooked the fish, started playing it, gone as tight as to my left, and it's gone into a root and it was just all solid. I thought, oh great. It's all I need now. I just started catching it and now it's all gone solid. So it pulled pulled for a break and lost a lot. Lost the lost the whole lot. So in my head I'm thinking, oh great. I've just started catching and, and, and now I've lost a lot. So I forced my hand a little bit. I either had to like sort of set up another another feeder and have another go and keep catching on that or try something else and make, make something else work. So I put the feeder off, off to the side, I fed my pace line. I thought right there's not there's not a lot, lot left now, there's probably two hours left of the match. And uh, so I'm, I'm catching, I'm doing all right. Everyone I could see in the match, I was doing okay on, but I couldn't see Mikey. So in the back of my mind, I kept thinking, I need to push it, I need to push it. I need to get to that like 160, 170 mark. And at this stage, I was probably on about 100 pounds, 90 to 100 pounds. And I fed that pace line, just put half a pot, half a 250 pot of micros, with a little little dollop of paste in it, fed it down there. I thought I'll chuck a chuck my short method feeder line and see if I can uh, nick one on that. So I fed it, chuck my method, two chucks, no bites. So that short method feeder line was 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 really not good. I never had a bite on it on the day, so that was a bit of a waste of time. Dropped on my paste line, and first chuck I've had a six pounder. For all, oh, brilliant. Let's, let's just catch on this now would be fine. Caught probably 10 fish over the next sort of 35 minutes so it's quite good that pace line. Bringing you between a pound and like I said that, that first one I had was about six pounds but they were mainly like a pound to two pound. So carrying on feeding my casters lines as I was fishing the paste and as as we sort of get into the sort of the last hour and a half of the match I'm still on that pace line I was feeding the casters, I looked up and I seen a swirl and I seen a bit of activity out there and the, and the wind had dropped a bit at this point because it was, it was quite bad at one point but the wind had dropped and I thought oh I need to go out there and try and catch a shallow and have a good run this last hour so I left the pace line alone, went out, dropped in shallow, straight out on the because I could see a few swirls and a bit of activity out there I went straight in on a 10 inch rig Caught, caught one first drop. First drop I had a carp. It was like instantly last six ripped out. I forgot oh, great they, they hear there's loads of them yeah. So went out, had a lovely little run of 10 inches deep for probably 35, 40 minutes. And they were all good fish, they were all sort of like three pound to, to five pound. They were really good fish. They did go a bit iffy for a little bit then after that first 35-40 minutes of the, on, on that line it went a bit iffy so I dropped back down to 12 inches and it was a matter of feeding lifting and dropping the rig a little bit slapping a few times I did mug one just off the outskirts of my feed I seen him come up and slapped over to him and caught him but this last sort of hour and 20 hour and 30 minutes was was really good they were like um, probably my best period of the match catch up really quick and sort of the last 35-40 minutes I just could not get in quick enough um, so it was, it was it was really good I, I really fancied it and just as they called all out I hooked the fish just before they called all out landed it so I finished on a fish which I thought was really good I looked at my clickers because I thought the 160 170 would be would be enough so I looked on the clickers and I had £210 on my clickers. So I was hoping that if I was if I was like right with my clickers, I'd have £200, which I didn't think 
would be would be caught where Mikey was. Um, I don't think the peg's strong enough to, to catch 200 pounds. Well, anyway, they come down with a waist thing. Um, my first net that I took 50 pound in went 59, so they were a little bit bigger than what I thought they were. Um, the next net I clicked 50 pound in went 56, the next one 54, um, and so on and so on. So I ended up weighing 234 pound 8, which is a, is a colossal weight for, for the match rig on my springs. Um, for, to be honest with you, I thought I'd done enough because my target weight was 160, 170, so to catch 234, I felt like I'd, I'd done enough. Uh, I packed up quickly, jumped in the van, drove around to see Mikey, had a little bit of banter between us, you know, as you do. Um, asked him what he think he got, he said, he said he got 180, 190. I said, bloody hell, have you? He said, he said, what did you weigh? I said, uh, two, three, four. He said, oh, I'm only joking. He said, I'm trying to wind you up. I said, what are you got? He said, 120 to 130. And as it happens, he wasn't a million miles away. He had uh, 127, which to be fair, is a really, really good week from the from the area he's in. Like if he had fished a perfect match, he would have only caught 150. So it's a really, really good, good week. And um, no, it is what it is. I've won the match. Um, I managed to knock Mikey out, so I'm into the next round, which is which is always good. You know, you hate you hate to sort of beat, beat your mates, but um, you know he, he knocked me out last year, so it's nice to get a bit of revenge and you know, return the favour. But we're still good mates after it. We had a little chat, and a little talk, and uh, spoke good about the fishing on the day, which is always nice. Um, also, with winning the match, I also broke the match record for the match lake, which was at 218 pound for a long time. Um, so I've had 234.48, which managed to break the match record as well. So, all in all, it was a really good day. Really good day. Um, thing I think I'd done right on the day was my. My sort of swapping lines, my my um, my decision making to change lines at the right times um, was really really good. I thought I could I catch on that method. When it started slowing, I come off it. I caught on the pace quite well, but always kept my eye on that shallow line. When I could see sort of indications of fish out there, I went out there and caught really well on that. So I thought my decision making was really really well, really good on the day. Um, things I did done well, I think going and having a little practice the week before made a massive difference because it took me probably two hours, two and a half hours the week before to find find out that these carp were coming into your swim so shallow because they they didn't give themselves away, they didn't didn't show you any indications that they were up that shallow feeding. So <coughs> that really helped. The fact that I could go in the 12 inch and 15 inch and catch fish on that and be confident that that's the level they were coming in at was was really good. Um, things things that didn't quite go to plan that I think probably I could have approved on was I caught a lot of silvers the the week before, so I fished an 11 dura slim through a through a short cut. Now. The 11 dewy slip was, was fine for taming those carp and F1s, but it was soft enough that when I was hooking the bream and skimmers and I eat shallow, I wasn't losing them and they weren't flapping about on the surface. But today, there was hardly any bream or, or I caught it. Well, certainly from where I was, it wasn't. Um, it was mainly carp. So today, I did switch to a 13 Dura slip, sort of in the last 30 minutes of the match, 40 minutes of the match, which did make a big difference because when I was up in the car, shipping back, I was only having to sort of strip twice to land them. Where on the 11, it was taking me a bit longer to get in, which 
it's not a bad thing, but when I was trying to put a week together quite quickly, it sort of slowed me down a bit. So that's one thing I think I could have improved on. I think I could have fished 13 deer slip a little bit earlier and maybe put an extra sort of 15 to 20 pound on my weight. But you know, I still caught enough. Um, it's just something to think about for next, I think. Um, the other thing I think I probably wouldn't do next time is it's probably still I probably still set it up that short method feeder, but I don't think I'd give it as long. Sort of I like give it sort of a few chucks, and if it's not gone round, I'll chuck on that longer method line. Um, and the other one is the skimmer line. Like you've got to feed it. It's a sort of a throwaway line there. Like you've got to feed it. I never caught a fish on it. Never had a bite on it on the day, but. You've got to feed it, you've got to give it a chance, um, so I'd probably still put that line in, but I wouldn't waste much time on it. So, there we are, that's the sort of breakdown of my match. Um, it was a good match, go you know, through to the finals of Wales now in, in the Fishing Association knockout. Uh, hopefully I'll go all the way to the final, wish me a bit of luck. But, yeah, and broke the match record. Can sort of uh, get much better than that, can you? If you're gonna gonna beat someone like Mikey Williams, who's a class act, you've got to do it in style, I suppose. And I did do that, so happy days. If you did like this video, like I always say, like and subscribe the channel. It's free of charge. But it will give you a notification when my next video comes up. Um, I'm going to be doing these breakdowns quite regular now after every match. So if you do like to have a listen and uh, see what I've got right and what i got wrong and how I fish my match, then like and subscribe and you'll get a little notification telling you when my next video is up and you won't miss a, miss a video then. So please, please like and subscribe and... See you soon.